checks in exchange for rent. Hello and thanks for joining us live at 6 o'clock tonight. I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Abel Garcia. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears first broke this story in August. She joins us tonight to explain the legal wrangling that's holding up the case. The plaintiff in this sex contract case involving a local property manager is asking that her federal trial be allowed to continue. It's been on hold for weeks. This after the landlord filed bankruptcy on the morning it was supposed to resume from a previous pause. The plaintiff's lawyers are asking the court to lift the stay and finish trying the case. Plaintiff Candy Torres is suing former real estate broker and property manager Alan Rothstein for violations of the Federal Fair Housing Act, wrongful eviction, sexual harassment and deceptive trade practices. In this federal lawsuit, she accuses Rothstein of forcing her to sign a sex contract in order to stay in the rental home he'd already allowed her to move into with her five children. Court records say in 2018, Torres and her children were homeless and searching for a landlord who would accept a Section 8 voucher. Rothstein agreed, but allegedly required Torres to pay unlawful rental fees and charges. Court records say Rothstein breached his agreement to reduce her security deposit in exchange for work she did cleaning, painting, and carpeting the house. Then, when Torres was at her most vulnerable, Rothstein demanded sex from Torres. When she refused, he demanded she sign a sex contract or lose her housing. It's direct consent for sexual intercourse and or or which is in italics. Who names a document that? We asked legal expert Bruce Flammy to analyze the case for us in August. And that's where I started laughing because this is a legal contract the way the uh, actors on Grey's Anatomy are real doctors, okay? This is literally not worth the paper it's printed on. In court records, Torres says she signed the document, believing it to be illegal and unenforceable and never acted on it. What do we make of the fact that she initialed this thing? Nothing. Um, people sign things all the time and the popular myth is, well, you signed it, so it's binding. No. There are a variety of things you can sign that are not binding. Uh, any contract that is against the law or public policy is not binding. The trial went on for a week in August before U.S. District Judge Andrew Gordon paused it at Rothstein's request. Rothstein, who's approximately 80 years old, claimed he was having cognitive issues and suffering emotionally due to death threats he'd received in the wake of media reports on the trial. Judge Gordon had reset the case for two final days of trial starting Monday, October 3rd, but on Sunday night, October 2nd at 10 p.m., Rothstein filed bankruptcy, which automatically put everything on hold. Court records show Rothstein was previously sanctioned and fined for misconduct by a district court judge for delaying the trial for several months during the discovery phase. Records say Rothstein never paid the nearly $4,700 fine. In emails attached to the court records, Rothstein's lawyer first says his client is in bankruptcy, doesn't have much money and has many debts. But in the next sentence, she says Rothstein is looking forward to settling the case, which would involve a substantial payout. A hearing on the motion to lift the automatic stay due to bankruptcy is set for November 23rd. Darcy Spears, 13, investigates.